there's a brand new type of medication in the dry eye space, and no, this one isn't an eye drop. I recently made a video all about the eye tear device and the concept of neurostimulation to help patients make more of their own tears. And in that video, I mentioned that nasal sprays are around the corner and being looked at, and we're gonna accomplish the same goal. And now they're here. So the FDA just approved Tervea for dry eye, and today we're gonna talk all about it. Welcome to Eye School with Dr. D, where my goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every week. You've made it to Eye School with me, Dr. D. In today's lesson, we're going over a brand new type of dry eye medication, and surprise, it's a nasal spray. Before we get started today, I wanna to mention that this channel is not only all about eye education, but it's about community too. And so I would love nothing more than for you to share your experiences with neurostimulation. Have you tried it? Comment below so that we can all learn from each other and hear each other's stories. And if you found this video because you were searching for information on dry eye syndrome, I actually have a playlist that I'll leave here for you to check out. There's all kinds of education there about dry eye and blepharitis, and I hope that you'll find it useful. So just last week, I was really excited to get an email from Oyster Point Pharmaceuticals announcing a whole new way to treat dry eye. So I've talked about neurostimulation before. I'm gonna leave that video right here for you. That video is all about a device that was approved last year for neurostimulation in dry eye called the iTier 100. So this new medication is totally different because instead of being a device that uses vibration on the side of the nose to stimulate that neural pathway, this medication is an inhaled nasal spray and it's called Tervea. It's indicated for mild, moderate, and severe dry eye. Because it's a nasal spray, you use it twice daily and it's just literally inhaled in the nose. So why does that make sense? Why would you inhale a nasal spray for dry eye? Well, actually the trigeminal nerve, when stimulated, increases basal tear production. Basal tears are those important tears that keep your eyes moisturized and prevent dryness of your eyes. It's very important for a person to produce a good level of basal tears throughout the day. And in patients with dry eye, often they're not producing basal tears like they should. Now there are other kinds of tears, like reflex tears. Reflex tears happen like when you get something in your eye, maybe an eyelash or you, um, anything. You get something in your eye, that's a reflex tear. But what these devices, like the eye tier 100, and now this inhaled nasal spray are able to do is help you make more of the baseline tears or the basal tears. So this medication was recently approved by the FDA and I went ahead and read some of their um, research that they presented to the FDA to get it approved. One of the things that caught my eye was this idea of tear foam production being measured. So I actually measure tear foam production in my practice on all of my dry eye patients. We do something called an anesthetized Schirmer score. So in the FDA trials and the ones that they presented to the FDA, Patients had their Schirmer done, and Schirmer is scored from zero to 35 millimeters. So the average baseline of the amount of tears that patients were making prior to treatment was five millimeters in the study and 5.1 millimeters in their second study. So they did two different studies presented to the FDA. So of the patients that were um, treated with Tervea, um, 52%, so over half of them, achieved greater than 10 millimeters of increase in their Schirmer score. So what we're talking about here is how many tears do you make prior to treatment with Tervea and then after being on it for, I believe it was 30 days, I can confirm and put down below. I'll also link the study down below. But after that period of time of being on Tervea, over half of them increased it by 10 millimeters, which means they're getting at least 15 millimeters. Now that does put patients into a more normal level of tear production. Five is definitely not enough. We usually consider above 15 to be normal. So in the second study, I mentioned there were two different studies with this. In the second study, it was 47% of patients had that 10 millimeter increase, equal or greater than 10 millimeters from baseline. 
and so you're still at about 50%. So it is increasing tear production at least half of the time. And when you compare that to the control group, in those two studies, it was only 14% and 28% of those patients increasing by at least 10 millimeters of tear production. So of the patients treated with Tervea, the mean change in their Schirmer score was 11.1 and 11.3 as compared to 3.2 millimeters and 6.3 in the vehicle you know, treated patient studies. So that was really interesting to me because by stimulating that trigeminal nerve pathway, we're helping you make more of your basal tears. And so that's exactly what this company looked at and was able to prove to the FDA that there is more tear production happening. When I looked at the eye tear device, the interesting thing is that that is a sustained tear production situation. So over time, you tend to produce more tears. So I wanted to get into some housekeeping questions about the drop that you might be interested in. The storage for this drop, if you're a dry eye patient, you know sometimes things have to be stored in refrigerators. The storage for this nasal spray, I keep calling it a drop because I'm not used to having nasal sprays in dry eye, but the storage for this nasal spray is just room temperature. You also might be wondering about adverse reactions. The most common adverse reaction reported, and it was reported in 82% of patients, was sneezing. And so you can expect that if you're taking this inhaled nasal spray, that you may have some sneezing with it. Um, there were also some other events that were reported in, they said five to 16% of the patients, and that was cough, throat irritation, and even like nose irritation, what they call installation site irritation, just from literally putting the medication in the nose. Um, I didn't prepare it for today's video, so I'll make sure to link the actual study, but I believe their marketing material is saying about two weeks to start working. Again, we'll defer to the description below for that since I didn't write it down. So that is everything I know personally about Tervea. As a doctor, I have not started prescribing it yet. My understanding is that they're going to roll this out in November. So we're looking at November 2021, very, very soon having this drop available, or I keep calling it a drop, it's a nose spray, having it available, and I will start prescribing it right away. So I will make sure to leave in the comments as I get more experience with it and know how it's working with my patients. That is going to be it for today's iSchool lesson. I hope you're as excited about this new nasal spray as I am, and I will see you next time. Class is dismissed.